Hello and welcome to lesson five on applications generation. Uh, today we're going to be looking at libraries, linkers, and loaders just to kind of finish off this series. Starting with libraries, you've probably heard the expression, there's no point reinventing the wheel. This is very apt when it comes to software development. Often code required to perform complex tasks has already been written. This code can be reused by other programmers to simplify their job. I'm just working on a very simple piece of programming code. <laughs> I see. Oh God, now I'm lying again. I didn't understand any of that. If libraries are available, it's probably best to make use of them where possible. Software libraries are often designed to tackle complex tasks, such as dealing with graphics or cryptography. These require a certain amount of expertise and may be time consuming to program from the beginning. Therefore, if you make use of the library file, you get a high quality piece of software that you know works and you don't have to program it yourself. So here we have a very simple example of some library code being loaded into a Python program and then used. We start by loading the code in by saying import time. And then at some point later on in our program, we say time.sleep with five in the brackets to denote five seconds. Programmer does not need to know how time.sleep works. They just need to know what input is required and what the code will output. So I know that if I call time.sleep and add five in brackets, the program will pause for five seconds. I don't need to know how the time code works. I don't need to know all the different sub programs that are built into it. I just need to know how to use it. And that saves me having to program it myself. Programmers can make use of a library through something called an API, Application Programming Interface. This is a type of software interface offering a service to other pieces of software. Interestingly, a library may be written in one language and then have APIs designed to work with other languages. Libraries can make software development very easy. So imagine if you want to capture photos or videos from a smartphone camera. You don't actually have to write your own camera interface to go with your application. You can just use the camera API to embed the one built into the phone in the app that you're developing. Another example of this you probably have seen before is when you visit a website and a message pops up in your browser that the website is asking to see your precise location. This is when the website is attempting to use the geolocation API in your web browser. So the web browser does all the hard work of checking your GPS or checking your Wi-Fi connection or whatever to narrow down your location. What I want out of each and every one of you is a hard target search of every gas station, residence, warehouse, farmhouse, hen house, outhouse, or dog house in that area. Let's look at some of the pros and cons to library files. Well, first of all, the pros. There's no need to write procedures from scratch, which saves time. Because the code has already been tested, it's probably not going to contain errors. This means that your application itself can remain small and compact. It allows code to be shared with other applications that make use of the same code. An external library can be updated without need to recompile the whole program. Library functions can be written in the most efficient language for the job. We'll look at this later, but library routines are connected to the program using a linker. And the address of the library routines can be handled by the loader when the program is run. We'll look at the last two in a bit more detail just coming up. Uh, cons. The library has to be well written and robust or it will impair all the applications making use of it. Some specialist libraries for engineering, science and finance can be expensive, though often there's a lot of free ones that you can just use and download. And obviously for runtime loading, the library has to be present. If you're trying to load a library that's not there, you're obviously going to have errors in your code. So connected to that, we've got the idea of linkers and loaders. Once code has been generated and optimized, it's still not quite ready to be run there is a good chance it will rely on code from libraries. The job of a linker is to include this library code and all the compiled files into the final single executable program. So you look over here, I've got all my object files and binary ready to go, but I've got some library code that just needs to be integrated together before we end up with that final executable file. Linkers can either be static or dynamic. 
when using static linking, all the library code needed is put directly into the program when it is compiled. This means that the final program can be large in size, and a computer could have a number of different programs, each with their own separate copy of these library routines embedded within them. So that means you've got a larger size of file and use it more space in your hard drive or whatever, and it's less efficient. The alternative is dynamic linking. This tries to circumvent this problem. Compiled versions of the library are stored and the operating system links a program to them when it is run. So you have a compiled version of that library file and all the different programs that make use of it are linked to that one copy of the file by the operating system. The only problem here is, of course, if that library file then gets deleted, renamed, moved, it can cause lots of errors with many different programs. After an executable file has been created, it then has to be loaded into main memory when it's run. The part of the operating system responsible for doing this is called the loader. That's quite simple. The loader loads programs into RAM. So that was quite a short one. Don't need to go into that in too much detail. Today we looked at libraries, linkers, and loaders. Libraries contain existing code that developers may wish to reuse. Linkers are used to incorporate library code into a final program. And the loader is the part of the operating system responsible for loading an executable file into memory. I think that's everything in this unit. So hopefully the whole, the whole set of lessons there was useful to you. Good luck with your studies, and I will see you again in the future.